we're working through the rest of the uh, um, FRQs for uh, Taylor polynomials. So this is number three here. Um, uh, let f be the function defined by f of x equals one over x minus one. Um, write the first four terms and the general term of the Taylor series expansion of f of x about x equals two. So we can build the first four terms using our um, Taylor rule. So first thing we can do is you can um, rewrite the function in a form that will allow us to easily find the derivatives. So we can um, represent one over x minus one as x minus one to negative one. Then we just go through quotient rule to, um, uh, not quotient rule, uh, chain rule to get to our, each of the derivatives. So first derivative negative one, x minus one to the negative two times one. And then the second derivative, bring down to the negative two, subtract one from the exponent, bring down negative three, subtract one from the exponent. And then we can evaluate each of the derivatives at x equals two. So plug two into each of uh, the derivatives and the function and we get uh, f of two is one, f prime of two is negative one, second derivative at two is two, third derivative at two is negative six. Then we plug into our rule. Um, so we know the first two terms is always just going to be the result of the slope of the tangent line. So y sub one uh, minus slope times x minus x sub one. And then we can start building our rule here, which is second derivative evaluated at two over two factorial times x minus two squared. And then the last term is six over three factorial x minus two cubed, one, two, three, four. So we have uh, four terms here. Okay, and then this represents uh, the first four terms of one over x minus one. And if we wanna write the general term, um, we know that this is an alternating series, so we can have negative one to the n, and then each of the x minus two is just being um, raised to an exponent n power. Right. Um, another way that we can do this is we can go through geometric series expansion. So, but if you look at this form, this is not quite in the form of, of a geometric series. Uh, geometric series is a sub one over one minus r, and this is not quite one minus r, this is x minus one. However, if we can rearrange this um, to have one um, positive one followed by a negative, um, then we can also, um, then we can, if we can convert it to a, a geometric series, then we can pull out the pieces and create um, the, ser um, the first four terms of the series as well. So let me walk you through that. What we can do is, um, if we want to force that one to be outside in front, uh, that's the same thing as saying one minus parentheses two minus x, right? Um, because um, I, if I want a one to be positive, um, uh, I can have a one out here, but then if I add one to two in front, I have to also make sure I um, subtract one from um, inside. So I have one minus two minus x, which is going to give me the same thing as one over x minus one, negative two plus x. So negative uh, one plus x, the same thing as um, one over x minus one. So we're not quite there yet. Um, uh, what we can do is we can rewrite this as, pull out the negative out here as negative x minus two, okay? So now, if this is the case, we know that we have a, a ratio here, and the first term is one, so one and then we just multiply each term by the ratio, minus x minus two, plus x minus two cubed, sorry, x minus two squared, minus x minus two cubed, so on and so forth. So that's another way that we can generate the first four terms of the polynomial, of the Taylor polynomial. Okay, part B. Uh, use the results from part A to find the first four terms of the general, and the general term of the series expansion about x equals two for natural log of x minus one. Now it's asking us, to write the first four terms um, for natural log of x minus one using what's given from part A. But if you look at this, natural log of x minus one, this is not quite the same as one over x minus one. So we know that these are not gonna be the same function, but um, we have to be able to identify what is the relationship then between natural log of x minus one and one, mi one over x minus one that this part, this problem is asking us to find the first four terms based off of this. So if we look closely enough, 
the relationship here is actually um, these are derivatives uh, uh, forms of each other. So what that means is the derivative of natural log of x minus 1 is 1 over x minus 1, which means that the integral of 1 over x minus 1 is equal to natural log of x minus 1. So we know uh, the, uh, the polynomial expansion for 1 over x minus 1. So then if we, can, if we have those polynomial terms, then we can just find the integral of those terms, and that will allow us to reach natural log of absolute value of x minus 1. Okay, so the relationship is uh, the integral of 1 over x minus 1, which is part A, um, is equal to natural log of x minus 1 plus c. So uh, we know that um, we have the a polynomial expansion for 1 over x minus 1, which is given here. So if we just find the indefinite integral of, this, of each of these terms, then we can arrive at the polynomial expression for natural log of x minus 1. So let's go through that. Um, we're going to find the integral of each of these terms. So 1 go through power rule becomes x. x minus 2 go through power rule becomes x minus 2 squared over 2. x minus 2 squared becomes x minus 2 cubed over 3. So on and so forth. Which means that our general rule is also affected by the power rule. So x minus 2 to the n becomes x minus 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. And then we have the alternator out here in front. Now it's an indefinite integral so we don't, we don't want to forget the plus c at the end. Right? Of course these will go to um, infinite terms but then we're also going to have a plus c um, at the end. Now we can use this information that's given to us from part b to find um, what the c value is. It says about x equals 2. So we know that we know this is equal, right? We know um, natural log of x minus 1 is equal to all these terms plus c. So if I can replace each of the x's with 2's, then that will allow me to solve for c. So 2 gets plugged in for x. Natural log of 2 minus 1 is natural log of 1, which is 0. 2 gets plugged in for each of the x's. However, after the first term, which is 2, every other term cancels out because x minus 2, 2 minus 2, which is each of these will go to 0 leaving us with just plus c. So we get natural log of 1 is equal to 2 and then all the 0 terms and then plus c. Which means that 0 equals to 2 minus 2 plus c so c equals negative 2. Now because c is negative 2 we can actually rearrange this to to make it uh, match the rest of the terms that we have here. What if we put this 2 which is c right after this x value. So if we do that then we have x minus 2 because c is negative 2, x minus 2 minus x minus 2 squared over 2, and we see that it becomes a nice pattern um, which represents natural log of absolute value of x minus 1. All right, now part c says um, use the series in part b to compute a number that differs from natural log of 3 over 2 by less than 0.05. So what we want to do is we want to create we want to um, create uh, the polynomial expansion of natural log of 3 over 2, um, but we want to have enough terms from the partial sum so that um, our approximation uh, or our partial sum is going to be less than the maximum error. And the maximum error in this case is going to be less than 0.05. So we want to basically have enough terms so that our approximated polynomial um, uh, our polynomial ex uh, approximation will be no um, will be off by no more than 0.05 okay and uh, we can do that by um, by finding the first few terms and then see which of the terms will be less than 0.05 alright so what we're going to do is we want the result of natural log of 3 over 2. So 3 over 2 means that um, we want to know what the x value is that will cause um, this expression to be um, 3 over 2. So if we set x minus 1 equal to 3 over 2, then we can figure out what x should be. So if we do that, if we let x minus 1 equals 3 over 2, solve for x, we get x equals 5 halves. So that means I need to plug 5 halves into each of the x's in order for this to represent the value of natural log of 3 over 2 or to approximate the value of 3 over 2. So I'll plug 5 halves in for the x. So 5 halves minus 2 is going to be 1 half or 2.5 minus 2. 
plug 5 halves in for the x. I get 5 halves minus 2, which is 1 half squared, over 2, which is 1 eighth. Plug 5 halves into the next term, we get um, uh, 1 half to the third power, which is 1 eighth divided by 3 is 1 over 24. So let's just stop there for a moment. And if we think about 1 over 24, 1 over 24 is actually going to be less than 0 0.05 because 0 0.05 is actually 1 over 20. So because 1 over 24 is less than um, 0 0.05, then we know that we can let this be the error for this polynomial. Okay. So um, if we let the first two terms um, represent uh, the value of natural log of 3 over 2, this, these two terms will be accurate enough so that uh, this approximation is not going to be off by more than 1 over 24. And 1 over 24 is less than 0 0.05, so we are in the safe um, error bound here. Um, so it differs uh, from 0.375 by less than 0.05. Okay, let's look at um, the back page here, next page, number four. We have f uh, represented by f of t, which is uh, 4 over 1 plus t squared. And then g is the definite inter or is the integral of f of t. Okay, part a says find the first four non-zero terms in a general term. So this is one of the, uh, the tedious um, elements of these types of problems. A lot of times students... Uh, look over uh, the fact that they need to include the general term. So this um, is tedious, but we need to make sure uh, it's a good idea to underline if you see general terms to help remind yourself to not forget to include the general term in your answer. Okay, so f find the first four non-zero terms. Now, if we look at this, we should, rather than building um, our, to our um, Taylor polynomial from scratch, we should be able to see that this is going to be something that we can manipulate to make it look like a, a, a geometric series okay so if we convert this to be 1 minus negative t squared now we have our first term a sub 1 here we have our 1 minus and here's the ratio so basically each term is going to be multiplied by negative t squared so I can just use that to help me build my um, Keller polynomial here so 4 multiplied by negative t squared becomes negative 4t squared times negative t squared becomes positive 4t to the fourth and then multiply again by t squared so on and so forth so if we see these terms here we should be able to create our general term which is we know there's an alternator so negative one to the n and we know that each of the t values each of the exponents is multi is increasing by um, uh, by 2n so 2n is the exponent and it's always a good idea once you create your general term that you go back and you plug in your n values and make sure that each of the n values um, give you um, um, the terms that you need um, just to make sure that your general term is correct. All right, so that's part A. Part B, find the first four non-zero terms in their general term for the power series expansion of g of x. So the relationship between g of x and f of t is that because we have the polynomial expansion for f of t, if we go through power rule and find the integral of f of t, then we've arrived at the general term or the um, 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 the general equation for g of x. So g of x is simply the integral of f of t. So e for each of the terms, we'll just go through power rule. 4 becomes 4t. 4t squared becomes 4t cubed over 3. 4t to the fourth becomes 4t to the fifth over 5, so on and so forth. And then we can also... Um, adjust our general term our, um, to be uh, going through power rule to t to the 2n plus 1 parentheses same thing as um, uh, 2n right 2n plus 1 okay and we're going to add 1 to the x to the, uh, to the denominator as well okay and then we have our general term here and the first four terms Okay, part C, find the interval of convergence of the power series. Okay, so we know we can go through, uh, now that we have our general term, uh, we can use this, uh, we can use ratio test to determine what the interval of convergence is. 
So we can add one to the expo um, to a sub n plus one. So um, 2n plus 3 over 2n plus 3 divided by a sub n divided by a sub n is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of a sub n so 2n plus 1 over x to 2n plus 1 if we clean this up we get x to 2n plus 3 over 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 1 over x to 2n plus 1 I'm going to rearrange this um, the x to 2n will cancel out leaving us with x cubed over x to the first which is x squared the limit as n approaches infinity for 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 2 will just wash out to be just 1, so we're left with the absolute value of x squared is less than 1, which means that interval of convergence will, must be between um, negative 1 and 1. And we last step is to test the endpoints. So if we plug 1 into this function here, because um, we know this is, uh, we know here are the first four terms already, so if I plug in 1, I get 4 minus four thirds plus four fifths minus four ninths and if we see that um, each of the terms um, is uh, is decreasing or um, actually each of the, the each of the terms is getting smaller and smaller and uh, the limit of our rule of sequence is going to zero and that's enough uh, to show that the series will converge at one because we have an alternating series so if there's an alternating series um, the restriction for the series to converge becomes a lot um, easier to pass. Okay, now, um, so we know that at one, the series will converge, so um, let's move on to negative one. If I plug negative one in for the x's, um, it'll still be alternate series, but it'll just be negative one plus one third minus one fifth plus one seventh, so it'll still converge by alternate series test. So our interval of convergence is um, between negative 1 and 1 inclusive um, uh, including the endpoints.